So welcome back to the second part of our video looking at AIO coolers. We've already done one video comparing the Corsair H75 to the Thermaltake Flow Ring 240 and you can go and check out the video up there. But one thing we mentioned in that video which we kind of didn't get time to look at at all in that video because it was quite a long video and it took a while to make is that I said in that video we're going to swap the fans over between the two AIO coolers so we're going to do just that in this video and we're going to have a little play with some other fans as well right after this. So for the sake of comparison I've run Prime 95 again on there just to make sure that we get the same kind of temperatures that we did in our previous test. Uh, go and check out that video before you watch this one to have a look at what we did on that and see the comparison between the two. I don't have my companion with me today to move the camera in so you're just going to have to take my word for it and I'll see if I can superimpose it on the screen so you can see it might be too far away. We're getting 82.8 there and that's after about probably about half an hour testing Prime 95 with the Corsair. So it's about the same as what we got last time. So within the margin of error there from uh, different conditions, ambient room temperature and all that. So we're going to shut the machine down, change the fans over and see what happens. So that's the fans removed from the, quite dusty actually, um, Flow Ring 240 there. So we're gonna leave that one down there because we're not testing that one right this second. So the only issue with these Thermaltake fans, it, well it's not really an issue, it's just the way they've been designed, is that they must be plugged into the RGB controller, which also powers and spins the fans and it also controls the RGB on it as well. We can't plug those into a header on the motherboard because they aren't designed that way and they've got more pins than you would normally get on a motherboard so unfortunately we can't plug them into the CPU header on the motherboard like we did with the original fans for the H75 from Corsair uh, so we're gonna have to control that using the Thermaltake software so let's get those fitted on H75 so we're gonna mount the fans in the same orientation that we did with the default Corsair ones as well so um, they will go with the label facing inwards towards the case and the air will go through that way and out that way which is through the radiator or at least it will be when it's connected so uh, let's get this fit and let's fit the rear fan on the cooler not forgetting to put it in the same orientation as this fan all the fans will be blown towards each other which again as I explained in a previous video if you'd seen that one um, that's a bad idea so here's the Corsair H75 fitted with the Thermaltake flow ring 240 fans Here's the radiator from the Flow Ring 240, just hanging in the bottom, just chilling. Uh, so we're going to do the same test we did in the previous video, but with the fans installed, bearing in mind these only spin up to about 1500 RPM, maybe just a little bit over. So let's head on over to the screen and see how this does. So here we are. Uh, we're currently idling a little bit warmer than we were last time in our previous test. Uh, we're about 39.8, as you can hopefully see on the screen up there using hardware info. So we're going to run the same test as we did before, the Prime 95 torture test, small FFT test, level 1, level 2, level 3 caches, maximum power, heat and CPU stress, 
stress. So we're going to run that and hopefully we're going to get a, a result. So let's run that now. Or not. Interesting. Huh. Seems nothing goes quite to plan when you try and do a video. Okay, so take two. I've spent about an hour and a bit trying to figure out why it keeps shutting down when I was running the test. Um, there was some strange overclock set, so it's everything set to stock now. And we're going to rerun the test and hopefully it works this time. So same test as before. And let's, uh, let's give that a go. I don't know whether you can hear the fans ramp up. So the fans for these thermal take fans are controlled by a controller, as we mentioned earlier in the video. And we can already see there, hopefully you can see already, the fans have gone up to just over 1500 RPM. These two fans, these two uh, RPMs here are the fans on the CPU. And hopefully you can see that clear enough that CPU usage is pretty much 100%. And we're at 4.18 gigahertz on all cores. If we move over to Ryzen Master here, hopefully we can see it clear enough at least that the temperature is now 101 degrees. It doesn't look very promising. I'm not gonna leave this for any length of time um, simply because that is way too hot for this chip. So I'm gonna stop this and see what we can do about that. So we stopped the test and the CPU temp has dropped back down to about 42, 41. It's slowly going down. The fans are still ramped up to about 1500, just over 1500 RPM. And they've slowed down a bit now. The CPU temp is still really high actually, considering we're at 4.1, yeah, around 4.1 gig on all cores now. It seems to have finished the test properly. So it's now dropped back down to about 39 just over 39 degrees there. Well, that was unexpected. I didn't expect those fans to um, to make it that much hotter. Now, if you remember in the previous video, when we ran those fans on the radiator that came with those, the Flowering 240, uh, we were getting, I think it was 80, was it 85 or 87? So that was quite high even with those. So it's interesting to see that the temp's gone up that much by just changing the fan. And we already know that with the 3800X, with the Corsa H75, with the proper fans, the original fans that come with it, we were getting far lower temps than we were with the Flowering 240. That's not looking good for the Thermaltake ring fans. So we're gonna try some other fans now and see how that goes. But we've got a few other things up our sleeves. So um, we're gonna try some really, really cheap fans, because why not? Some really big ones and some really, really big fans and uh just for the hell of it let's see what happens shall we before i swap the fan around i thought well why not just test it with one fan and see how that does so i've taken one of the fans off so it's basically in push configuration now because the air is coming through that way i'm not hoping you can see that on the camera so we're going to run the same test with one fan on the corsa h75 so let's do that now see if it stays on we're already up to 98 degrees 99 degrees. I can hear the fan kicking in now. The RPM there, it's going up 1,300, 1,519, 1,621. So it's actually spinning a little bit faster without the other fan on there. Seems we're maxing out 1,630 RPM, as uh, you can probably see on there, maybe a little bit higher there as well. It's not going to make much difference. And again, we're already at 101 degrees. So yeah. Long term, I'm probably not going to be using these fans for much longer, but that could all change depending on the radiator. Very interesting. So now we're going to change the fans completely. We're going to go for some really, really cheap ones and see how that does. So we've now got the bog standard. It actually came from another thermal tape case. I forget the model now, but it's a really cheap case. Um, it's a really cheap fan because it's, it's a free one that comes with the case. It's not even RGB. Now I've had to redo the um, dual intelligent processor five software to re, re kind of configure the fan so it can detect the maximum and the lowest it can go because it's now plugged into the CPU fan header on the motherboard. It's not looking too great for this fan either because the maximum RPM this one will go to is 1140. 
is not exactly very high, but it's not always about the RPM, it's about how much air it pushes through. So we're gonna do the same test anyway and see if it gets really hot or not. You can see there the temperature, the fan speed is going up based on temperature and we've already hit 101. Yeah, you heard that right, 101 again on this fan. 102, 103, I'm gonna stop the test now because that's getting a little bit too hot for me. And you can see there, look, it's, it's maxed out. The fan just can't push enough air through the radiator. It's not designed for it. So let's stop the test before it kills my CPU. Let's change fans, let's go bigger. And once again, we've gone a little bit bigger. We've gone with the original 200 mil fans that came with this Corsair, uh, Corsair, the Thermotech X71 full tower case. That's these two here. So I've mounted, of course, they're not gonna fit the 120 mil rad. So we've got them in the best we can. There's definitely air passing through. Anyway, we're gonna run exactly the same test with the 200 mil fans either side in push pull configuration on the 120 mil rad. So let's see what happens. Again, I've had to redo the fan curve for these fans because it's detected new fans. So uh, I've done all that. These ones go up to about 1,427 RPM on the 200 mil fans, which is considerably better than the cheapy fan that we just ran a moment ago. That is not fit for purpose. So let's run the test, see how hot it gets. CPU's at 100% again, that's fine. CPU speed, 4.18 gig there. And holding, the temperature has still, it's still too hot. It's, it's at 98 degrees C. I don't know if you can see that. 99, it is going up slightly. Fans aren't quite at their maximum RPM yet. Give it a few more seconds or so. I think they're at the maximum now. We seem to be holding at about 99 degrees on the CPU. Not ideal, but we are holding steady at 4.199 gig on all eight cores, 16 threads. 100 degrees now, so it's creeping up. Definitely looking like you need high RPM fans for this radiator, at least anyways. Interesting, still too hot, so let's go bigger. And we're back again, and you can probably see something's changed on the AO cooler, the Corsair H75. There's no fans on it now. It's completely passive. Only the pump is pushing the water around as it usually does, but there are no fans to cool the radiator at all until now. I said we were gonna go bigger and we are gonna go just a little bit bigger. So we're gonna to have to move the case around there because I need to clear some room. No, we're not painting. We're gonna be using that. So without any airflow going through the radiator, it's just sat there idle doing things in the background as Windows does. It's at 44, 46, 45, so it's mid 40s it's at at the moment with no airflow whatsoever. I don't know how this is gonna turn out. I haven't even tested this yet. This is literally the first time I am doing this with this fan. I don't know. Let's just get on with it and see what happens. So let's. Turn the fan on, we're gonna put it on full whack. I have no idea how big the blade is. I have no idea how fast it spins. We're just gonna go go for it. This is not scientific. We've probably already figured that out by now. So let's just run the test. And yeah, see what happens. Actually, before we run the test, I've noticed it started to go down. We're at 42 now, but it is going down. Not much, not going down much. Let's see if we can angle the fan a bit more. Maybe move it a bit closer. Oh, we didn't like that. Windows was doing something in the background. What are you doing, Windows? Stop doing stuff in the background. We're at 40, 38, 30, yeah, 38. So we're at the temperature we were with the fans at their lowest setting, the ones we've already tested. So um, I think that's a good starting place. So let's kick off the Prime 95 torture test. And they call it torture test for a reason. Here we go, 88, 95. 96, 97, 97, still at 97, 98, oh, it's going up now. Definitely, I can feel heat coming through that. 98, 99, we're still at 4.1, 4.2 on all cores, 100 degrees now. I don't really want this to go much higher than that because I don't want to damage the damn CPU. So let's see if I can move that a little bit closer. I don't think I can really do that. This, this, I can't, the plug's not long enough. Let's angle it slightly, see if we can get the temp down. Of course, I wouldn't suggest doing this at home. That's why I'm doing it for you, so you don't have to. 103, no, 
it's clearly not having any effect moving the fans. So we're going to stop that and uh, yeah, probably never do that again. I don't recommend doing that at home. So we've reached the end of the video now and there are a few reasons for that. Uh, one is I'm not completely happy with the temperatures we're getting on the Corsair H75. Something has changed between the last video and testing it with this one to make it go to about 100, 101, I think 103 we even saw it previously as well. I need to do some investigation on that so there's going to be a part three of this where we will actually put the fans on the flow ring 240 radiator but it's still chilling at the bottom of the case there I'm not entirely sure what's going on i think it's putting too much voltage in something somewhere is is not quite right so i'm going to go through the settings of the board probably do a factory reset on it as well and we're going to come back and we're going to test we're going to test it all over again now i know someone commented on the last video saying prime 95 will is not good for your cpu and it will kill it and you're probably right it probably will um so something to bear in mind is that prime 95 is a torture test this there's a reason we use prime 95 to test these things out it is the most extreme case the most extreme kind of temperatures that you're going to get on in a workload uh and, and prime 95 is a prime example of uh, stressing your cp out to the a most limit that you can possibly get with your board. Earlier on in this video you know that when I first ran the test the machine just completely shut off um, and that was due to an issue and I think that issue is still carrying on through to the previous test that we've done with the different fans on that H75 as well so yeah something is not good here so we're gonna come back and revisit this a little bit later on after we've figured out what the heck is going on and uh, hopefully we'll give you some accurate measurements of temperature with the different fans and um, yeah i've got a really big fan and we're going to use on it as well no fans on the heat sink but there will be something blowing air through it so uh, yeah stay tuned for that in part three coming very soon thank you very much for putting up with this awful awful video hopefully it was um amusing to you and um we'll see you in the next one Goodbye.